So, how much do all of you know about web novels? Similar to web comics, they're also stories that naturally spawn from the internet. However, unlike web comics, they also take after light novels in a way. The stories are oftentimes meant to be long form stories from beginning, and unlike books, which are typically only written with one book in mind until a sequel comes out or something like that, they're often meant to be long-form series that run into each other naturally over the course of the story, similar to how comics do, or web novels, or light novels, I already said web novels, I meant web comics. <laughs> anyway, what's all this talk about web novels for? Well, today we have a book that I didn't realize was a web novel until I started looking things up about it. You see, I have this habit of looking around Amazon for books to read. Things that you typically wouldn't find in a random Barnes & Noble or any other bookstore. Generally, I find these books interesting, and I found a few that I like to talk about on this show. I like talking about new and upcoming writers, or just writers that have a general sense of uniqueness to their own style, or make interesting stories, which a lot of them do. So I do look this stuff up sometimes, and I found what I'm talking about today. So let's talk about it, shall we? So once upon a time, there was once this legendary warrior known as the God King, who mastered all magic, mastered all swordsmanship, and even invented a new form of magic and swordsmanship in his own right. He basically became All Might and created world peace at the time. However, upon his death, he left behind a massive treasure trove of all of his of all of his treasures, including his legendary sword, Durandal. While well, the sword Durandal is actually a spirit sword, and of course is a sentient being in its own right, and is currently living inside of the God King's treasure hoard and infinitely bored. He's been sealed away for millennia and is barely surviving, often having fed upon the spirits and other things that lived within the treasure hoard and leaving nothing behind but himself. He has accepted his fate and is ready to die when a group of adventurers or intrepid explorers stumble across him. And, well, he scans the group and finds a new wielder. And he picks a scattered brain squirrel girl. Why? Because she's the complete opposite of his previous master. Because, while the God King has a good rep, he's a complete asshole who lied, stole, betrayed, and did whatever he wanted to achieve power and glory. And Durandal's sick of that life. He decides to choose Lucia, the aforementioned Scatterbrain Squirrel Girl, and decides to train her to become a legendary warrior. But again, she's a Scatterbrain Squirrel Girl with obsessive tendencies and a number of odd eccentricities. Things can only end in good. So now let's talk about this book's biggest problem. And if you ask me personally, which you're watching this video, so of course you're asking me, is the pacing. The story really doesn't seem to have much of any focus until towards the end of the plot, but even then it feels really, really forced and just an excuse as to why certain characters say certain actions at the very beginning of the plot or why they're a big deal currently. We start with Durandal teaching Lucia how to be a great warrior, as he questions the new world around him and what's changed since he's been sealed away. It hasn't been millennia as he thought so, it's just that there's a time differential between, you know, the seal and, you know, the outside world, so it's only been like 30 to 50 years, I forget exactly how much time. Then we have Lucina get poisoned. <laughs> I play Fire Emblem, so I say Lucina. Then we have Lucia get poisoned, and Durandal has no choice but to go to sleep to heal her. And for basically, he has some untold amount of time before he comes back. And because of Durandal's quote unquote sacrifice, Lucia doubles her efforts to training and also becomes incredibly paranoid because she was just poisoned. From there we follow Lucia training and growing stronger until Durandal could come back and then some stuff happens and she managed to get wrapped up with a demon girl and then she ends up in a giant tournament and that ends up wrapped up by a mysterious attack force that really wasn't even hinted at until it just suddenly appears out of nowhere. It honestly does feel like a web novel or some web comics and the fact that the pacing is weird and how the plot seemingly comes and goes out of nowhere. So if I have issues with the pacing and the plot and this and that, what do I actually like about this story? Well I have to say I really enjoy the characters here. Durandal is a kind of enjoyable asshole. He's internally an old man trying to get his head wrapped around the, the way the world changed in his absence, as well as he constantly diving into memories of the past in order to make connections to the present. He's a tough teacher who pushes Lucia into dangerous situations and never can imagine her ever being stronger than him, as he questions the future and what'll come of it. Lucia, of course being the cover girl, 
because Light Novel 101 says you put a cute girl on the cover, is interesting in her own right. She's clearly, she's clearly a character somewhat driven by her various lust. A lust for power, a lust for Durando, a lust for money. Going from a slave with no idea what she wants to become, and then becomes one of the strongest things on the world, which honestly does make her pretty interesting. Although I oftentimes think her path to the top might have been slightly too easy. They set up the path that she takes in stories so it doesn't feel like an ass bowl, but she eventually ends up casually slaying things that are supposed to be this monumental threat to all of existence and just pushed it off like it's just Tuesday. She takes down impossible foes and it feels like absolutely nothing. That's another big thing. After the first part of the story, the stakes kind of just disappear quickly. We skip into the future and then there's almost absolutely no challenge for Lucia on her journey. There might be the occasional thing that gives her a momentary pause and She's fighting with the handicap from the onset, considering the whole poisoning and lack of the Rondel thing. But it's kind of funny how little the stakes actually are in this plot from here on out. Again, I do enjoy these characters, and the big plot turn that happened after the first part was a generally compelling part. But things kind of fall apart towards the end. Not that I say it's a non non enjoyable falling apart of the plot. It's just falling apart. Now, the story isn't over yet. There is a good part of Volume Two available on the website Royal Road, but it's Currently also on hiatus as the writer, and I can't pronounce this correctly, Virilis has other works he's doing and might be getting around to it eventually. I very often know that feeling. Now obviously as I've compared this story to light novels, I have to say the story does remind me of a lot of anime. Like a lot. Like I can imagine this being some cheap one season anime or like if it weren't for all the sexual themes, swearing, and often mentioning of penises. Overall, I do enjoy this, as well as subsequently hate parts of it. If you're looking for a simple, easy read, then I do recommend this. But don't expect anything groundbreaking here. Just come sit back and enjoy some characters in a pretty dumb story that's still pretty enjoyable. And constantly hearing a squirrel girl yell out penis.